Next, we're going to talk about the powers of I. So this first one, this looks like something's on here. I to the first is just I, just like anything else. 3 to the first is 3. X to the first is X. I squared, which we said earlier is a biggie. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll circle that one because that's definitely one you want to memorize. Anytime you see I squared, just like we did in the examples above, you replace it with negative 1. I cubes, negative 1. Here's another one that is super important when you're breaking down I's to the power. Positive 1. So I to the 4th equals 1. So anytime we see I to the 4th, we can replace it with 1. So here's three things just to remind you of what you need to remember from this section. The square root of a negative number is just i. And remember, this is really one i. We just write i. i squared equals negative 1. i to the fourth equals positive 1. So those are the three big things from this section that you need to remember for your test. And what you should notice about i's is the powers just repeat. i to the 5th is i, i to the 6th is negative 1, i to the 7th is negative i, i to the 8th is 1. See how it just keeps repeating i, negative 1, negative i, 1. Well, you don't have to remember any of these other ones because just knowing these two, you can do any one you want from there. Okay, so let's transfer this information over to the top of the next page and we'll see how to use this. So let's write our facts. And remember, the more times you write things, the more likely you are to remember them. So the square root of any negative number is just the square root of the number, but with an i. i squared is negative 1. i to the fourth is positive 1. And that makes sense because isn't i squared times i squared i to the fourth and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So when you square this and square this you get those. So this squared gives us that, this squared gives us that. But as long as you remember these that's what's important for this next section. So to simplify powers, we're going to use the i to the fourth fact. i to the fourth is equal to 1. And some teachers will teach you to use the i squared fact, but I think it's much easier to use i to the fourth. So that's why I use that. So this is how it's going to work. So you're going to need your calculators. So I need to know how many times 4 goes into 476. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 476 divided by 4. And I see that is 119. goes in equally. So I'm going to use that fact to rewrite this as i to the 4th raised to the 119th power. Why am I doing that? Because we know from up above that i to the 4th is 1. And then I can find the answer to this just by plugging 1 in there. So 4 times 119 gives us 476. So i to the 4th is 1, so I'm going to replace it with 1. And what's 1 times 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 1? 119 times, it's 1. 1 to the anything is 1. So I just evaluated that big, huge power of i just by using this known fact, i to the fourth is 1. So I replaced i to the fourth with 1, raised it to the 119th power, and 1 times itself, however many times, is just 1. So now let's look at what happens if 4 doesn't go in equally, like in 65's case. So take your calculator, do 65 divided by 4, and we get 16.25. So it goes in 16 times and then some. So we really just need the 
whole number, 16 for this. So this would be i to the fourth 16 times. And this is where we use our calculator again. So let's do 16 times 4. Whoa, Kim. 16 times 4. That's 64, right? So I'm missing one I because I need 65 I's. So I write this. So there's 64 I's because we know we multiply when we're raised to a power. And here's another I. So we still have 65. All I've done is just rewrite it using i to the fourth. So take the whole number off the calculator. That is equal to 64. I look up here and go, how many am I missing? Oh, I'm missing one. So I add one out at the end. So watch how this works. We know this is one to the 16th times i. Well, we just learned over here, one to any power is one. One times one times one times one. 16 times is one times i, and I just evaluated it. It's i. And remember from the previous page, it has to be one of four answers. The only answers we can get are i, negative 1, negative i, and positive 1. Those are the only four possibilities for answers. So first answer we got was 1. It's in this list. And the second answer we got was I, and it's also in this list. So all four of these I know are going to be one of four things. One, I, negative one, or negative I. So just remember, one to the anything is one. Okay, now let's do another one. This one also does not go in evenly. So take nine, 95 divided by 4 and we get 23.75. And remember how I said, just do the front number. So we're going to raise it to the 23rd power. So don't look at the fraction part. You get that later. So this is i to the fourth. And the whole number off the calculator was 23. So now I need to multiply 4 times 23 to see how many I have. 92. So I'm missing three more, right? So I'm going to write this as i cubed. Now I have 92, 93, 94, 95 i's. So I haven't changed the problem. It looks different, but I still have 95 i's. 4 times 23 is 92, plus 3 is 95. So now i to the fourth is 1, so it's 1 to the 23rd. And notice how i cubed is not up in this list. I need it to be in this list, so I'm going to write it as i squared and then an i. And do you agree that's still 3 i's? 2 plus 1 is still 3. But I can't leave anything in an answer higher than i to the first, so that's why I needed to break it down. So 1 to the anything's 1. We know that i squared is negative 1. And i doesn't have a value. It just remains i. So that's my new problem. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 times i is negative i. And that's one of the four choices from the page prior, right? It had to be 1, i, negative i, or negative 1. There it is. So 23 times 4 is 92, 3 left over. But we can't do anything with i cubed, so we break it down into i squared and i. 2 plus 1 still 3. Now we can simplify this to be 1. 1 to the anything's 1. i squared, negative 1, and then an i. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 i, or we write it negative i. So see, isn't this fun? Yay, you do a lot more of this in 152. This is, this is a big problem in 150. Okay, so now let's do the last one. Now would be a good time to shut off the video.
and try this one on your own before I do it and make sure you got it. Because just copying down stuff that I write, it's not going to stick with you. It's much better to try them on your own first. So I would shut the video off, work it, and then turn the video back on. Okay, so let's move over here. So we have I to the 38th. So take our calculator, divide 38 by 4, and we get 9.5. But remember, we only want the front part. So we just write 9, the whole number part. So this is I to the 4th, 9 times. So how many do I have there? 36. How many do I need? 38. So I have to add on two more. So then check and make sure you have 38. 36 plus 2. Yep, that's 38. So we're good to go. Now we can start simplifying. i to the 4th is 1 to the ninth power. And i squared is what? Negative 1. And like I said, you'll have that four times on your test. You have to know i squared is negative 1. So just keep writing it down every time you can think of it. Well, anything 1 to the anything is 1. So this is really just 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. Also, again, one of the choices. So now you can see here we did all four types. There were four possible answers, 1, negative 1, i, negative i, and we did ones that had all four of those. So if you have some of those you can practice on on your homework. Like I said, the more you practice, the easier they get because they're really not too bad. I'm going to focus here because it's a little out of focus. Okay, so we already talked about the pattern. Now let's go ahead and talk about complex numbers. So complex numbers are in the form A plus B, I. So they're called imaginary numbers when you just have an imaginary part. That's called pure imaginary. When we add a number in front like 3 plus 4I, then we call it a complex number because it has a real part and it has an imaginary part. So the rest of this section is going to deal with complex numbers, which will have, well, there'll still be some pure imaginary numbers too. So either pure imaginary or complex, which have the real number part and the imaginary number part. Complex number is of the form A plus BI. A and B are both real numbers. You can see that. And I, as we already know, is just the square root of a negative. So when b is 0, so that means this part's gone, then it's just a real number. When a is 0, which means this part's gone, then we just call it an imaginary number. So this is a real number. This alone would be an imaginary number. Together, we call them complex number. And the I part must always be at the end. And I know that's hard to remember because when we do X's, for instance, we always write 3X and put 4 at the end, right? But with imaginary numbers, you always put the imaginary part at the end because it's not a variable, so it doesn't obey the rules of all variables. So when we're writing polynomials, we put it in descending order with the constant last. When we're writing imaginary numbers, we need it in the form a plus bi. So the real number part's first, and the i must always be second. That's one point for every single problem on the test. If there's an imaginary part, it goes last. Um, the quantities a and b are real numbers, imaginary parts. OK, the complex number a plus bi, a minus bi are complex conjugates. And that's going to be important later when we go to do the division. Because in division, we have to multiply by conjugates. But we already know conjugates, right? They're exactly the same, but one's plus, one's minus. But because these are complex numbers, they don't just call them conjugates. They call them complex conjugates. So A is the real part, B is the imaginary part. So identify the real part and the imaginary part of the following numbers. 
we'll start that on our next video.